Andrew Greer is an award-winning musician and songwriter, and he co-hosts Dinner Conversations with Mark Lowry, which you can watch here on Cornerstone Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Andrew, welcome back yeah, to Cornerstone. thank you so much. Mike Lowry, I love that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love earlier when it said, uh, Andrew's here to talk about his new show. I was like, yeah! That's right, Mark. <laughs> so, Andrew, so some of our um, family that doesn't know a little yeah. bit about who you are, can you just shortly tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, music is what kind of brought me to the table, literally. I was am a songwriter in Nashville, Tennessee for a lot of Christian artists and have gotten to be on the road with some of those Christian artists and, and be a part of that world and still get to be a part of that world. Music is my first love. It's where I, it was my first language, you know, but then I learned I could talk and then I learned I might be able to write a little bit, you know, and so then books came into play and then uh, just naturally interviewing, you know, I love, th that's when I still hear someone say, you know, he's an interviewer. I'm still kind of owning that role, but I love it. I love the opportunity to, and, and you get this, both of you get this sitting there, um, to just really dive into people's lives, their stories, right? To get to, and my dad's a therapist. So I think it comes by naturally because he, he taught us to listen first mm -hmm. and then talk, to really hear someone's story, then ask questions about their story, not just bring it back to yourself, but ask questions. And so to get to do this show, Dinner Conversations, get to partner with you guys at Cornerstone is really, um, I wouldn't have known it was a dream, but it's been cool to see some dreams come true that you didn't even know were kind of a part of the fabric of what you could do, you know? Well, you know, I was listening to you sing. I, I thought there might have been some brother in you. Yeah! Not, not, not brother, brother. Listen. B-R-O-T-H-A. I know. You don't have to spell that out for me. It's in my spirit. Yeah, I, I, okay, in Nashville, there's this great group called the McCreary Sisters. Now, they started their career with, like, Bob Dylan and um, Andre Crouch and mm -hmm. Bobby, um, I was about to say Bobby Bones, Bobby Jones. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show a totally different thing. Anyway, and they still have a huge... Um, career singing back up for a lot of people for African-American women and I remember seeing them perform and thinking oh my gosh I have got to get to know them and so I introduced myself to Anne who's kind of the lead sister and singer and I was like hey do y'all ever I didn't know their history I just saw them perform I said do you ever do background vocals I was doing this hymns record and wanted this real kind of soulful sound on a couple tunes and she was like yeah, baby, we do background vocals. I mean, they've been on Elvis's records, all this stuff. But anyway, they gave me a shirt that said, you are a McCreary sister. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> it could go a lot of places these days, but um, I'll receive it. Yeah, right, In the right. spirit of being a brother, That's I'll right. receive right. it. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, exactly. No, no. Well, brother, well, tell us yeah. about your show, Dinner Conversation. <laughs> okay, so, you know, uh, Mark Lowry, who is a singer-songwriter in his own right, of course, wrote Mary Did You Know and is known for mm -hmm. his comedy, uh, a really big personality. Well, we uh, met each other through an interview situation. I was hosting a series for CCM Magazine, uh, kind of with their cover artist. He was the guest. And we just really meshed with our... Uh, style of conversing and our love for conversation and so he said what if we started first it was just going to be a podcast we love podcasts and then we were getting these people in the room for the first season you know people like Shonda Pierce and Point of Grace and Nicole C that we talked about you know and we were like we should film this and we're that turned this into a TV show the, um, called Dinner Conversations with Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer. The subtitle is Turning the Light on One Question at a Time. And I think the idea is, again, that's going back to listening to your story and then asking questions. Instead of assuming that I know your story because I see how you look or I see what region you live in or I see that you're part of a Christian television station, maybe I should just listen to your story first and then ask questions. Find out more about you. And as I find out more about you, and maybe you find out a little bit about me, which is more easily done around the table, around yeah. food. Food is a more exposing place for some reason. It's more comfortable, we're relaxed, we'll be more vulnerable, we'll share our stories more easily. So on the show, we wanted to set a literal table. We are eating. Um, which Tom here, Tom Hollis, does not love that portion of it. I'll tell you that we're <laughs> eating. He told me a while back. But uh, we're eating as a way of just to say it's kind of food was always part of communion. Yeah. You know, it's part of communing together. It's part of communing with Jesus when you look at that with the disciples and Jesus. And so we wanted to set the table uh, really for conversation. So that's the idea. We talk about everything from depression to blended families to racism in the church. Kind of dive into conversations that may not be as easy to talk about or as generous to talk about maybe online, yeah. you know, through comments and stuff. Here we can actually talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a clip for season, okay. season two, so here's a sneak peek. 
Let's go way back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my parents had a dream that I no did not share with them. Hi. <laughs> I'm trying to hear him. I can't you're laugh my, my you're even on my deaf side and you're annoying. God saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And so did America. I saw people who would never step in front of a church were writing me letters and saying, I've given my life to God. Because didn't Jesus say that go into all the world and teach the gospel? And now I know part of your story is reaching people, relating to people out of dark places yeah. because of living with depression. I lost my first, my wife, who I was married to, she passed away. Because I, I, I prayed, you didn't, you didn't do your part, I did my part. So when I feel like God didn't come through, I felt unloved and allowed the word of God to change the way I felt. And once I changed the way I felt, it changed the truth of the situation. When you go on the truth, even though you feel it's this not the way, truth, right. you're actually making the right decision. It'll change your feelings, and your feelings will line up with the truth. Mm. We are thrilled to have Danny Goki on today. And there's one seat left at the table, and it's yours. So let's join the conversation. I love that, just how you're sitting around having real authentic conversations about tough su subjects yeah. and situations like depression and different things of that nature. Yeah, you know, in that clip, it was Danny Goki, who of course was known for his role in American Idol, has become a, a really wonderful singer, songwriter, and Christian music. And kind of on a pop realm, you know, real uh, just upbeat music, but has dealt with cycles of depression. And so to have him to be able to, to have more than seven, eight minutes, which you might have on a on network TV or something, to actually be able to sit down and talk about what does depression look like for you? And what have you done through that struggle? And one that Danny will admit is not, it probably will never completely go away as far as having to work through it, having to process, maybe having another bout of some sort of depression. And that that's not, a, that's not a despairing thing, that there is hope through that, that there is light, you know, in the darkness. And, and then to relate that to ourselves. I mean, I've struggled with depression, and though I haven't maybe had cycles of depression uh, in the same way Danny has, I, have, I had a three-year period where definitely was debilitated by some anxiety and fear that was teetering on that line of depression and, and having to really work with my counselor about um, what are some healthy habits um, what are some possible medications? What are the things that I need to get back to square one so I can move forward? And being able to just be even that, like Mark says in that, in that conversation, he says, but what about people who need to take medication? To take some of that stigma away from, okay, I'm a Christian, I'm exactly. a believer in the power of God, but I also believe that God gave people brains Exactly. And that through their brains and through the science of the earth, they're able to create some things that can be safe and helpful for us in moving forward when our body is working against us, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you, I love the conversations that you're having in the clips. And, uh, you know, we were talking before something that you're passionate about is interracial relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to be something that's coming up in season two as well. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about why that's so passionate for you? Yeah, well, we had some guests on that you guys have had. You know Seth and Nerva well, and of course, they're an interracial couple, uh, married, uh, an African-American woman and a Caucasian man. And uh, we had them on to talk, because I can talk about it all day long. I'm not married to an African-American woman. Um, I don't, I, I, as a kid, I love that you joked about me being a brother, because, and that song was my attempt at being a brother, and probably failed miserably, oh, but, the uh, and everything, man. That was good. yeah, no. so, uh, but you know, I, I can only talk about it so far in that what I hope for people, for humanity, what I hope for the church, how I would like for them to express the conversation around race, but I only have so much personal experience with that. So I have to invite someone to the yeah. table or be invited to their table, Seth and Nerva to have them at our table because I think her family, being an African-American woman that was dating a Caucasian man seriously, I think they were just protective, wanting her to be aware of what could be in store, some of the comments, some of the criticism, some of the hardships, just culturally and socially, but also maybe with his family. And then Seth's family was not keen on the idea, I mean, and not keen on the idea is not expressing it as strongly as it was. I mean, there was a strain of racism in his family that all of that, played into their relationship. Now that's part of that episode, but I think the conversation around interracial relationships is about trying by, by hearing your story, by knowing where you come from, by you listening to my story, where I come from, are we not learning more about who God might be? Right, right. You know, right. like I, I want, I think 
God might get in a box just to relate to me, but he's not boxed in. You know, I might in the church growing up in Texas where there were mainly white people and, and Hispanics, um, the picture of Jesus that we most related to was a painting with him with honey brown hair and blue eyes. Well, I know that Jesus was a Middle Eastern man, so I know that's not true. Right. But we're always, I mean, I think God will relate to us right where we are. But I also think that's because we were created in the image of God. We are image bearers of God. And what does that mean? Because you and I don't look exactly alike. Maybe God is much bigger and more beautiful than I was ever taught. And, and I, that's my suspicion anyway. Like when I surrender myself to that thought that God is embodying diversity, it feels true to me. I know we can't always go off feeling, but it seems that th we are images of God. We've yeah. been created in his image. And so, I don't know. I, th I think it's really unique because uh, when you see two cultures coming together and then they procreate, you have a hybrid of two different walks. I mean, I'm mixed myself. My dad was black, my mom was white. And to see, you know, the hair you get, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, I got this curly hair. They don't know what I am sometimes. They're like, are you Puerto Rican? I have people coming to me going, you know what I'm talking about? And I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what it was. But I, they'll come and start speaking to me in Spanish and things yeah. like that. And some people thought I was Italian, but it's an expression of two people coming together. And then you get, you pull from all these different places. Uh -huh. And it's so unique to have that. I mean, you're married to Jake, who's white, which yeah, is. Yeah, so it's, you, my husband is like blonde hair, blue eyed. And you know, people are like, oh, we have no idea what one day our kids are going to look like. But yeah. I think there's Isn't something. That awesome? They're going to be beautiful. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, but I think what's so beautiful, and I think what I, I truly appreciate that you're having these conversations because yeah. I think the yeah. reality in America is that we are such a blended society, mm -hmm. that we are such a melting pot, mm -hmm. and it's happening with the marriages. And that's like yeah. the, you know, God created marriage, and what does that look like uh -huh. and how to function and do things. But I think it's so beautiful, you know, that God loves diversity. God loves, you know, all nations and colors. We're all going to come together at Revelation, so we better get used to loving one another yeah. and getting used to it. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, there is no distance between us from the spiritual perspective. We are family. We are connected for, uh, because we come from God. You know, I mean, like, and, and I don't, I love appreciating the differences. I love that you look different than me and that I look different than you, although I'd like to look more like you, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you got so, your own sexy, man. That's all thanks, good. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. <laughs> I got you. So, I mean... I love celebrating the differences too. Yeah. Like I, t I talked to you about going to these really large concerts in African American churches, which was not my tradition, and experiencing a whole new tradition and style of worship and and uh, the way that um, the people around me in those services would throw their physicality into worship was so new to me. You know, we were kind of taught to sit down and shut up and to think that maybe no stand up and sing feels most natural to me, you know? So we celebrate the differences, also realizing that all those differences are found yeah. under the context of who God is and has created us to be. That's awesome. And we want to get a look at the clip so everyone will watch and tune into yeah. Dinner Conversation. Yeah. So here's a clip of the show. Hi, I'm Mark Lowry. And I'm Andrew Greer. This is Dinner Conversations. Turning the light on one question at a time. <laughs> oh, Father in heaven. <laughs> Are we ready? I think so. Our season two guests include Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith, Jenny Owens, Kathy Lee Gifford, Danny Gokey, Dr. Caroline Leaf, Scott Hamilton, Becca Stevens, Will Graham, and Gigi Graham. Seth and Nerva with Montel Jordan. Crystal Lewis. What, now, why is he here? Uh, we didn't have the alcohol <laughs> tested. I mean, this just like, got really weird. <laughs> so join us for season two of Dinner Conversations. Turning the light on, one question at a time. That's what happened here. I was looking for someone in their 60s, 70s, 80s. To... <laughs> well, you found me. <laughs> I love it. It's full of laughs and conversations and food. It's really great what you guys are doing. And, you know, we're so grateful that people here at Cornerstone can tune in into dinner conversation. Yeah. Yeah. We're thankful for the partnership, yes. really. Well, you know, as I was sitting there watching interracial relationships, I mean, do I see a sister in your future? I see you, that ring finger is missing <laughs> gonna, some jewelry. It is missing some jewelry, some so, bling, yeah. So I is can, there a sister uh, in your future, possibly? Uh, there's not one in the picture now, but I have dated an African-American woman before and uh, would 
have no opposition to Mary. I don't even know how to take the answer to this question. But yes, I am interested. <laughs> 888-665-4444. Send a picture. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I love it. You got friends. Yeah, I got friends. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew. It's been so much fun Thank to talk and get this.